United South End Settlements recently marked its 125th anniversary with an updated vision plan. Put together in a strategic planning process, the vision focuses more closely on youth and breaking the cycle of poverty. The change at USES also comes after years of mounting financial difficulties, and one result is the end of its support for programs in senior services. To talk about the changes is the president and CEO appointed last year, Maisharia Weir-Lytle. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. First of all, this plan, uh, I guess more than anything else, is, is based on changes in the South End. What, what's been happening in the South End? Yeah, so I mean, over the last decade and, and even beyond that, there have been a number of changes happening in the South End. The demographics of the South End have, have really shifted. And it's a time for the organization to really look at our relevance uh, in the, the neighborhood and the impact that we are trying to have. Well, I know the, the vision plan you know, puts a more uh, intense focus on, on young people and that intergenerational process mm. of, of getting on the track to opportunities. How is this supposed to work? Well, United South and Settlements is celebrating 125 years, and so that in and of itself, I think, is pretty impressive that we've been able to uh, have this kind of longevity. And we have a history of really supporting families and helping them uh, navigate the the different challenges that they faced in the city, regardless of the you know the the decade that it might be in, and so here we are in 2017, and families are still struggling. There's still poverty in the South End, although there's been high gentrification there. We still have a lot of families that are struggling, and so our history and our expertise has been really supporting children and their parents, and we're looking at this as a two generation model where we're supporting children on social and emotional development, which is really critical for their success in education, while helping to stabilize the parents. And for parents, they're struggling making ends meet, um, having the jobs that they need in order to provide for their families, whether it's food or housing. So for us, we're looking at how we support the parents in stabilizing them through job training programs and coaching, which is going to be critical for them to set goals and really meet the goals that they have for themselves and their families. It, it sounds as if part of this is, is rather labor intensive, uh, intensive rather, with, with with a lot of close attention, you know, close tracking of people, I imagine. Yes, and I think of really partnering with other people. So this, the staffing model for us will likely shift as well as we are especially supporting parents on their journey around coaching. Uh, but currently, United South and Settlements already provides high quality early childhood education programs, after school programs. We have a fabulous summer camp on Squam Lake in New Hampshire. So we're already doing a lot of these programs. This is BNN News, and we're talking with Maisharia Weir Lytle from United South End Settlements. Uh, Maisharia, you, you came on the job uh, at a time that was not very easy at USES, mm -hmm. uh, some financial difficulties. Um, um, talk about that, because I, I've really seen this with nonprofits where they so openly talk about, yes, we've got these quality programs, but we also have a money problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things that attracted me to United South End Settlements was the deep history and the legacy of impact that we've had in the, the South End and throughout Boston. But yet we have this uh, ongoing structural deficit and have not been able to really overcome that. And I thought to myself, if I could join and, and try to make an impact so that that is no longer the case, so that this organization can last another 125 years, then I'm really up for the task for that. So it was a, it was challenging coming on board, and, and I've spent the last two and a half years really understanding the different uh, challenges that USES has, has been facing. And part of the strategic planning process that we underwent was really to, to focus on how we can have the greatest impact while also solving our business model issues that we have. So coupled with mission, we had to make sure that this is going to be something that will be financially sustainable in the future. This is not the first time I've heard about a nonprofit having to tighten the focus, but, but yeah. one of the things going on here, you have these senior service programs, um, they're going to be stopped, at least as far as programs run by USES, and some people are very upset yeah, about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, this was a, a very painful decision for us to, to make, and it, 
as we looked at the organization, all of our resources, and really being able to achieve the vision and the mission that the board had set forward, we just could not continue to do everything that we'd been doing. But seniors are a critical piece of our community, and we recognize all that they bring to us. And so we're hoping that we can really engage them in the new model as mentors and educators and coaches to really help support families. The other piece of this too, though, is if we can break the cycle of poverty for families, seniors of the future are going to be in a much better place for themselves as well. So we're really looking at this as a, a, the long term. Uh, we're in it for the long term as an agency, 125 years. We can do that. Now, I, I know you're still fairly new as the person in charge, but, but I think there are seniors who feel that they should have been engaged sooner, especially if you want to continue a relationship with them. Yes, no, I, I, I understand that. We did go through a, a pretty transparent process and letting people know where we were. As you mentioned earlier, we did say, hey, we have these financial difficulties, change is on the way, everything is on the table, we're going to be looking at everything. So we've been pretty open in our communication about where we've been and where we're going. And we've had to make this decision again, like I said, it was a, a painful decision, uh, not one that we took lightly at all. And we've engaged the seniors through the process, through focus groups, and heard what their concerns were, what they were looking for. Uh, we're providing a few exercise classes, a lunch program for a small number of seniors. And so the program has been under-enrolled, and we want to do better than that. By the way, the, in your blog, I think you was talk of a possible transition to some new location, maybe another agency. Any, anything to... Update so we are, st we are still working on that. We do have uh, several other nonprofits that are interested in taking on these services, but funding funding is an issue. They, they need to be able to raise the funds, and so there are grants, and we're partnering with them on the grants. So we're hopeful that by the start of fall, which is when the, the programs will start up again, uh, that we will have a partner uh, who's taken over the, the programs. We should mention, I know you've got, with, especially with the uh, anti-poverty program, you, you want to let more people know about that. I'm sure you want to raise more money to <laughs> make sure that works. So if people want to find out information, what's the best place to look that up? The best place would be on our website, www.uscs.org. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. My Sharia, we're Lytle from USES. Still to come, forming pathways to success for men from Dorchester, Roxbury, and Mattapan.